generally it's between 40 and 70. Uh, that's what you're looking for. Uh, it's generally noted on the data plate, but I have a hard time reading upside down under plates. All right, I'm gonna move back over here. Uh, I'll generally, we've done the test. Uh, you always want to start this up outside. And it's going to have a 60 second startup cycle. But what I want to do is I'm going to do an inspection on the furnace. I'm trying to get the information off the data plate. This is a forced induction fan. It's an 80 plus. This is a pressure switch. If I disconnect this hose when the unit's running, then it's supposed to cut that furnace off because what it's telling the unit is not detecting draft. So it's going to cut the unit off. Gentlemen, we'll just unhook this hose while it's running, and it'll tell me whether, it'll show me uh, whether the, this fan is working, this, this switch is working properly. It's got three burners. It's a hot shoe, igniter, it's not a standing pilot. And that's about 25,000 BTUs per burner. So we're going to get Anthony up there to fire this sucker up, if you can hear me. This stuff's I, great. <laughs> I, I can hear him. I hope the floors don't cave in. You heard the fan start up before it lights up. That's cleaning out the combustion chamber. The hot shoe is on. And all of a sudden, we're going to see the gas valve open. Poof. We've got it running. This is the exhaust pipe for the furnace. It's three inches because it's an induction fan. But one problem I see with it when I walked in here, this is single wall pipe. Single wall pipe cannot be used in an unconditioned space. It's got to be B vent or a B vent equivalent. And we're going to show you something in a minute. So I'm going to, I'm taking this, I'm, if, it, if this was an atmospheric burner or I would be going into each port and taking my air samples. Since this is an induction fan burner, I'm going to be taking it right there. So it's going to run. This is the same instrument that uh, Anthony was using as a Fire Rate Pro, or t you know, you can use any pretty much diagnostic test equipment. It's going to give me my oxygen and my CO. But we want it to, to come up to steady state. So we want that temperature to even out. Right now it's telling me it's 84% efficient, but that'll probably drop back down. It is now as the temperature rises on it. So we're coming on up. What this will do is tell me what I'm looking for in this unit is 100 parts per million or less. Uh, that's what the uh, codes are on it. It's got to be 100 parts per million, and that's what our standards read. And you can see, uh, it's hard to zoom in on this, I'm sure. But the temperature's going up. It's beginning to steady out. Now it's down to about 82% efficient. This is an 80 plus furnace. Uh, 90 plus is PVC bedding. I don't have to worry about a chimney. I can go through that block wall with it, bring my combustion air in from the outside. Uh, and the pipe's cool. This is hot. This is hot. Uh, it'll get hotter. We're about there, about 312 going up just a little bit, and we're running about 82% efficiency. And the CO is about 14 parts per million. Uh, same thing. I'm going to let that cool down a second. I'm going to reach over here. I've got mine. I'm going to do a draft test. Even on this, it's got a fan on it. Static probe. Actually, I think we ordered these through Granger's. You want this to go down. It's got little holes in it, so it makes your draft very accurate, very accurate.
It's about four pascals. Same thing. I look on my card. Check. It's about it's about four point four. I'm gonna go to my card. Fan assisted. And this is minus. It's going to be at this temperature, three pascals on the car. So it's got a good draft to it. Now. Uh, right now, if I can find what I do with some stuff, oh, this, I'm going to take, this is a thermocoupler, just don't plug it in backwards, I got actually another hole right here. reading it. I think my probe ain't working right. I got a connection that's not hooking up real good, but what the purpose of this is I want to check the difference between the supply and return. It should be between 40 and 70 degrees, and that's what I'm looking at. Uh, if it's too high or too low, then we've got a, either restriction or an undersized duct or an oversized duct. Generally, what I'm finding, a lot of times, we have too small a return. I've got too high a temperature. So I've got too high a temperature on the supply side. That means my return side is too slow, small. We have to go into a lot of times, I have to redo the return size because it's too small. You've got to have 400 CFMs for 25,000 BTUs. This furnace is about a 75,000 BTU furnace. So we need really about uh, 1,200 CFMs. It's based on tonnage. Every uh, one ton has got to be 400 CFMs. Uh, it's real important on the cold side because that cold air is hard to push. If your duct size is too small, then it's not going to push that air. Uh, I got a little problem with this furnace that I'm going to actually have to red tag it. So I'm going to crawl over to the back side and I want to show you something. Can you get over while I get over in here? <laughs> I'm going to try what it is. I'm crawling around. I'm getting too old for this. What I've got in here, this is the exhaust pipe right here. See this hole? Single wall pipe, and that's what problems you're going to run into. This elbow is completely rusted out. The pipe is completely rusted out. This venting system has failed. Then it's, it's going to be choking it down to the size of that wall cavity. 